All praises due to Allah. All praises due to Allah. And peace and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu and his followers and his companions. We have arisen and all dominion belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and all praises due to Allah. There's nothing worthy of worship except for him and to him is the return. O oh Allah, we have awoken by you in health and concealment. So conceal our sins on the day of judgment and grant us protection on the day of judgment. O oh Allah, whatever blessing we have experienced on this morning or any of your creation, it is from you alone having no partners. And so for you is all praise and to you is all thanks. All praise belongs to you as you are deserving of. O oh Allah, we have awoken uh, with you bearing witness and your creation bearing witness that you are Allah. There is nothing worthy of worship except for you and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is your slave and your messenger. As for what follows. This is our eighth episode in the series of The Excellent Example. And the topic of today is calmness and deliberation. The Prophet وسلم, said to Abdul Qais that you have two qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Forbearance and deliberation. What is intended by Rawiya is incredible gentleness and deliberation that you not be hasty, that you not rush. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to this issue. Allah says, Oh, you who believe, if you strike in the path of Allah, then ascertain and do not say to those who have said salam to you that you are not a believer. You are seeking the bounties of this world and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs incredible treasure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so ascertain. So whoever you're not sure of on the battlefield, you're not, you're not sure if they are Muslim or not, then do not hasten and do not rush that you uh, that you kill someone who is muslim do not do so until you are certain there's a there's a story that's narrated by ibn abbas that a man from bani salim he had come across one of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he gave them salam and this man had he had sheep and so they said he only gave us salam because he wanted to be protected from us. And so they rushed him and they killed him. And they came back to the Prophet ﷺ with the sheep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, O you who believe, if you go out in the path of Allah, then do not say to those who give you salam that you are not a Muslim. Because Allah is uh, seeking the bounties of this world. And also, another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, if a if a transgressor comes to you with news then ascertain it that you harm people uh, with your ignorance and that you become remorseful over what you did and what's been narrated about this that the Prophet Sallallahu had sent Walid ibn Uqba to Bani Mustaliq to take from them sadaqat when the news came to them, they got accepted, they got excited, and they came out to accept the messenger of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So when Al-Walid heard that these people had come out, he thought that they might have come out to fight him. And so he returned to the Prophet sallallahu And then he said, Bani Mustaliq had refused to pay zakah. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa became incredibly accept, upset and angry. And he's speaking to, and the Prophet ﷺ was debating whether to go and, and fight them. The delegation came and they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah. The delegation themselves came and they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah. They said, Oh, Messenger of Allah. We heard that your messenger had come back halfway. We were afraid that he had returned because of a letter that might have received or a communication that he might have received from you sending him back uh, because of your being upset with us and we seek refuge in Allah 
in the the anger of Allah or the anger of His Messenger. And so the Prophet وسلم, look at how they were thinking and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, O you who believe, if a fasid comes to you with news, then ascertain it. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Allah created the heavens and earth in six days. Of the, the wisdoms, why it was in six days is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us deliberation and pacing. And what is more important is that a person perfects something than to simply finish something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us deliberation in all matters, even in things that we are able to do. And also from what is beautiful and subtle is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed regarding the story of Yusuf. After the deliberation and the interpretation of the dream of the king, when the messenger came to collect or to break Yusuf out of prison, Yusuf السلام, he said, go back. He refused to exit. He refused to exit. He refused to exit and he said, go back to your Lord and ask him about the, the story of the women. Ibn Atiyah said, this action from Yusuf was out of patience and deliberation and seeking the uh, clearing because he feared that he would exit and that he receive a station with the king and that he would overlook his crime. But people would still view him in that way that this was a crime that he had committed, but that the king had pardoned or overlooked. And so Yusuf السلام, wanted his name to be cleared. And so the Sunnah, the Prophet وسلم, says to Ashaj ibn Abdul Qais that there are two qualities that you have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves forbearance and deliberation. Deliberation meaning that he he does not he does not rush. He, un, until he sees what he wants to do and what benefit lies in front of him. And so he had said to the Prophet وسلم, as reported by Muslim, is this something that you, is this something that I have acquired or is this something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in me? And he said, no, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. It's a natural state for you. He said, alhamdulillah, he said, Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me qualities that he loves. And in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, that deliberation is from shaytan and hastiness is from shaytan. Meaning it is from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and haste is something that is pushed forward by the devil as far as hastiness. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, hastiness is from the devil because it is, it prevents the servant from anchoring themselves and ascertaining, and 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 it brings about so many variety of harms, and it pro it prohibits them uh, from so many a variety of benefits. The Prophet ﷺ said, if I had stayed in prison as much as Yusuf had stayed in prison, I would have responded to the call of the invocator and so he is praising Yusuf السلام, for his deliberation and for his endurance and for his his desire for his innocence to be declared publicly also in the sunnah of the prophet وسلم, when the verse was revealed in surah al-hazab where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh you who believe if uh, oh, wives of the Prophet, if you want uh, the dunya, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, if you want the dunya rather, 
if you want the dunya fat anu sarihkunna sarahan jamila come and i will separate from you a beautiful separation he is offering them to stay married with him or to be separated from him to be divorced by him and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to aisha when he started with her he said i have something to propose to you but do not ask do not answer me until you consult your parents and Aisha radiallahu anha said, and he knew that my parents would never advise me to separate from him. And when he presented it to me, he I said, and what should I, what should I consult with my parents about? Rather, I choose Allah subhanahu wa taala and His Messenger. Also, and in the hadith, that deliberation in everything is good except for the actions of the hereafter. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa taala says, race towards the forgiveness of your Lord. <laughs> because in, delib- in in delay of good deeds are missteps and mistakes and cons. Majority of the crying of the people of the hellfire is due to procrastination when I perform hajj and when I get married and when I, and no one knows when they will die. No soul shall know what it will acquire tomorrow and no soul knows when it will in what land it will pass away. Imam Malik, he used to say, <clears throat> he used to be said that deliberation is from Allah and hastiness is from shaitan. And no one was hasty and correct. And a person delayed or deliberated and was wrong, except that the one who deliberated was more sound in their reasoning. No one was hasty and correct. And another person who was deliberate and correct except that the one who was deliberate was more sound in their reasoning and more sound in their correctness. And no one who is hasty is wrong. And another one who is deliberate is wrong, except that the one who deliberated is is wrong, is less catastrophic than the one who was hasty. Abu Hatim used to say, the loser is the one who is not able to be deliberate. وَالْعَجْلُ مُخْطِئٌ أَبَدًا And the one who is hasty is always wrong. Just like the one who ascertains is always right. The one who investigates is always right. And it used to be said, deliberation is an indication of a person being rational and it is protection from evil characteristics that is a cause for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love as has proceeded in two qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. It is also protection from control of shaitan and it is from, let's see, samples of deliberation and calm. Number one is in salah. So this is examples that the sharia gave. Number one is when you're walking to salah. Sometimes when we're praying, we see people, we hear people rushing. Even though their intention is good, but their actions are not are not correct. And for an action to be accepted, it must be sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it has to be correct. In the hadith of Abu Qatada, he said while we were praying with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we heard, the, we heard the, the rush of men. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what happened? And they said, we were, we were rushing to the prayer. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not do that. He said, when the Salah comes, then come to the Salah with tranquility. Whatever you catch, then catch. And whatever you miss, then make up. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, be tranquil. Whatever you're able to do. Then pray, whatever you catch, then pray. And also deliberation when seeking knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not race, do not move, do not, do not move your tongue to hasten with the recitation of the Quran. And so even in seeking knowledge, the Prophet sallallahu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will compile through your heart. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says that from the secrets of Surah Al-Qiyamah is that it combines deliberation in seeking knowledge that a person's ambition should not mean from the, the, the etiquettes that you learn is that from a person's ambition and passion that they do not hasten over the teacher before they are able to complete their presentation or whatever they are able to say. So the Prophet Sallallahu was being told to not rush Jibreel Alayhi He said simply hear. And then 
after that, he can repeat what he has said. And similarly, should be the student of knowledge that they do not interrupt their teacher until they're done speaking. Deliberation in criticism. Do not be hasty in condemning or criticizing. In the story of Musa alayhi salam, Al-Khadir intended to remove one of the boards from the boat. Musa alayhi salam, he said, these are people who carried us without any sort of, of, of money. And you harmed this boat, these nice people. Without they, they boarded us for free. Did you do that so that you could did you do that so that you could cause them to drown? And he said, Did I not tell you that you would not be able to be patient with me? Ibn Hajar he says, look at the commentary of Ibn Hajar of the Fuqaha of the great Fuqaha. He said the what the Al Khadir did, none of it. It has nothing to do, it, it does not go against the legislation in any way. Removing a board from the boardles, from the boards of the boat, to repel the oppressive tyrant from seizing it, and then afterwards returning the board on the boat and securing it and fixing it again—that is permissible. An oppressive ruler. It was a defect that was created in the boat to save it from the oppressive king. But Musa's rush to criticism. And then it ended up uh, appearing later that it, the correctness was with Al-Khidr. Also, deliberation is speaking with people. The Prophet used to, used to speak words that if a person wanted to count them, they'd be able to count them. If you wanted to count the words of the Prophet you would have been able to do that. Aisha, عنها, our mother, she says that the Prophet wouldn't extend in his speech and he wouldn't rush in his speech. His speech was deliberate and his speaking was deliberate. It was clear. Also in fatwa and in uh, judging between differing people, sometimes a person might come to... to some people rush to answer the question of the mustafti even before they're done speaking. And unfortunately, a lot of, uh, or some of the muftis on channels, they, 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 they do that before the, the questioner even finishes their question. Of the causes is, is anger or sadness, of the causes of lack of deliberation, or it could be negligence or desires or the lack of consulting of people. So how can you... How can a person secure deliberation for themselves? Number one is making dua for it. Saying, oh Allah, grant us good character. No one guides to the best of character except for you. Also paying attention to the consequences of hastiness. A person may do something after which that they regret and you're not able to go back. A statement that you say, it won't be able to come back to you. You can't swallow it again. It's come out, it's come out. Also, knowing the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the meanings and adorning yourself with them. Of them is the deliberate and the gentle and the kind. And of, of these names, al-hali meaning the forbearing, and of the manifestations of that, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives uh, respite to oppressives and the sinners and the wrongdoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if Allah were to hasten to those, their evil, like they want good to be hastened, their term would have been ended for them. But we leave the ones who do not expect the meeting with us in their transgression, wandering blindly. The, uh, the Prophet ﷺ was wearing a burta in the, in the shade of the Kaaba. And Khabbab came to him and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, do you not seek support for us? Do you not see what we are going through? Don't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us? And so the Prophet وسلم, said, A person before you would have a trench. And then he would bring a saw. And he'd be cut in half. 
and they will be uh, carved. Their skin will be carved. They will be skinned. But that will not repel them from their religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete this affair until a person will not fear anything. A person will be able to travel to Hadramaut in Yemen not fearing anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wolf for their sheep. And we saw in the story of Yusuf how deliberate he was and patient. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From what has been narrated in poetry, Salih ibn Abdul Qaddusi said, and weigh words when you speak. Because what shows intelligence to people of intelligence is your speech. And the people who, who uh, are consulted are those who are forbearing that when they are consulted, they deliberate until their hearts rotate in every valley. And so they understand what they are going to say, and then they speak. They're not hasty when they're consulted. They think they know what they are saying first. And another who said, Abu Tammam, where can I find a person that when I am angry and I speak, they are forbearing? He hears what you are saying. Sometimes you'll be speaking to a person and they're listening and they're listening, listening very well. And perhaps they actually heard what you are saying before you were born. They know this hadith. But they show you concern and listening as if they are hearing it for the first time. Who, for me, for a person, where can I find this person that when I speak and they anger them and they listen to it quickly and perhaps they know it even better? One of the said, he said, a person narrates to me, a young person narrates to me, and I listened to him with incredible concern. And by Allah, I knew this hadith before they were born. I, I knew this hadith. But he's coming to me, he's excited. So I'm listening to him. With every, with every, all concern, perhaps. And the, perhaps I know this hadith before. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for us. Salah wa sallam. Salah wa sallam. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.